So you know how most people are watching the news right now? They're having conversations with their friends, their family, their coworkers, their fellow peers in the business community. Everybody's confused about what's going on with United States inflation, what's going on with debt. So in this episode, I'd like to address the biblical perspective of what the Bible does to expose the lies and the truth about money as it relates to inflation and debt in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad Scripture Series starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? My name smart guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. Before we begin, please like this video so therefore we can help out these YouTube algorithms and at the same time too as well. If you haven't done so, please click subscribe because our goal is to get to 150,000 subs. So therefore we can award a church charity or nonprofit $5,000 on behalf of our squad, members and viewers of the YouTube channel, The Seven Figure Squad. So therefore we can help these organizations help and serve other people. All right, so let's get into it. So before we get into the lies and truth, about the United States inflation and debt and what we can do about it from a biblical perspective. We always go in our financial workshops, which is my day job, and help people understand how to avoid the five gotchas of money. So therefore, when they're planning for their finances, they can avoid these gotchas. So therefore, not only do they not lose money, but also they don't lose time. I'm not gonna go too much into it, but I'm gonna share with you these five gotchas and we're gonna unpack two of these in this video. So number one, if you want to avoid some of the gotchas of money, you got to avoid losses as it relates to investments and your income. So therefore, uh, whatever plan and goal that you have, it's always constantly moving forward that you're not constantly losing. So you're not taking one step forward, two steps back, one step forward, two steps back. And number two, healthcare to avoid losses as it relates to healthcare and expenses. Number three, taxation. Do yourself a favor and uh, either eliminate and or minimize what you normally pay in income tax, so therefore you can keep it in your pockets, legally and ethically, of course. And number four here, we'll discuss here inflation, and last but not least, the nation that you want to not be a citizen of, which is a citizen of procrast. Procrast, did that make sense? Yes, it's called the nation of procrastination. In other words, you learn something, you hear something, you obtain wisdom and understanding, but yet you don't do anything. So let's talk about number four, number five here in this episode. All right, so let's talk about inflation. How is it costing us? We're seeing this right now, hyperinflation or inflation, soon to be hyperinflation. They're projecting that the inflation period that we're in right now. In other words, the rising cost of goods and services, just basically the cost of living, the cost of you just to buy gas, you to buy milk, all that stuff right now, they're, they're projecting that by next year, 2022, is somewhere in the middle of the year, that's when things are going to start easing downwards. So in other words, you, in the next six, seven, eight months, nine months, 10 months perhaps, you might be in a position where you're just paying more money for gas every time you fill up the gas tank. You're just paying more money for food and groceries. Let's take a look at what the cost of living is just buying groceries. So bottom line, guys, if you are going to the grocery store, you're going to face a hit. So for the typical person, though, the Article suggests that it's only gonna cost you, it's only gonna cost you $175 per month on average, depending on where you live. So think about this though. You're working hard, you're busting your tail. Oh, you know, the United States government says, yo, we've made a difficult decision that relates to infusing our country with a lot of cash, devaluing obviously the cost of a dollar. How do you growing up when your mom sent you down to the grocery store? How much was a gallon of milk? Wherever you're at, whether you're part of the United States of America, wherever part of the world that you are in, I'm just curious, put it in the comment section below. Growing up, what did it cost you for milk? What did it cost you for soda, pop? What did it cost you for the typical lunch meal for you starting your first job? What did it cost you now to live? What does it make an impact? Why should it be such a fair thing for any government to say, hey, you know, citizens, we kind of screwed up with this thing and in order to correct certain things and powers that be, uh, we just need to raise what it takes for you to live in this country for you to put a roof over your head and food on a table. Do you think that's fair? So we're looking at, again, from the specific of a biblical perspective, I researched an article here written by Dr. Judd Patton, who right now is a retired professor of economics, he spent 39 years teaching economics. What is perspective of us from a biblical standpoint? I'll unpack it here real quick. Based on his work, he says, Bible is against inflation. So the lie is, it's okay to have inflation. Oh, Matt, you know, we're not that bad compared to everybody else. 
Here's a car, counter argument to that. It is against inflation from a biblical perspective. Because the Bible instructs us to honor money, to honor currency, not cheat. You know, back in the day, you, they used to have these copper coins or they had these silver coins. You know what people used to do based on those silver coins or copper coins back in the day or gold coins back in the day? They used to take them and they used to shave them. And then next thing you know, because money back then was also weighed, they had scales. And so over time, people kept shaving, shaving, shaving. They put little uh, shavings into a little uh, uh, container. And then they'd melt, that con they'd melt that from that container and melt it so they, were, they can create their own currency. So that's how people would be cheating the system. So in other words, that same gold coin or silver coin or copper coin would actually weigh less on the scale. And so wait a minute, I got a gold coin, I got a copper coin, I got a silver coin. He says, no, sir, your money's not valuable because it doesn't weigh the way it was originally minted the way it was originally created. Somebody shaved your coins. And if you look at coins today, there's a reason why there's ridges. Ever seen a, a quarter? Why is there ridges around a silver quarter? Well, because that is an identifying marker to show that the coin has not been shaved to lessen the weight and value of that particular silver coin. So let's take a look at what the Bible says about having precise weight and integrity when it comes to money. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 45, verses 9 through 12, it reads like this. This is what the sovereign Lord says. You have gone far enough, princes of Israel. Give up your violence and oppression and do what is just and right. Stop dispossessing my people, declares the sovereign Lord. You are to use accurate scales, an accurate ephah, and an accurate bath. The ephah and the bath are to be the same size, the bath containing a tenth of the homer and the ephah a tenth of a homer, and the homer is to be the standard measure for both. The shekel is to consist of 20 garas. 20 shekels plus 25 shekels plus 15 shekels equals one mina. So what am I getting at? God is precise about money. There's a specific measurement as it relates to that. In other areas here too as well, there should be no injustice in the measure of finances in the measure of money. Let's take a look at what it says in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 35. It reads like this. Do not use dishonest standards when measuring length, weight, or quantity. So if you're asking yourself, what is the government doing? What is my business doing? What are other entrepreneurs doing as it relates to this area? And from a biblical perspective, now you can stand up for injustices. You can say, hey, we voted for you. Hey, I'm hiring you. Hey, you're on my dime. You should not use false readings because you're taking away the money that was entrusted to me by the Lord. And it's my role and responsibility as a steward to make sure you don't steal from me. And quite frankly, that's a definition of what's going on with inflation because the same hard-earned dollar that you are going to work with day in, day out and earn, somebody pushing certain buttons are making that dollar less valuable for you your family, and the people that you love and care about. Now, with that being said, if you do act with honor and integrity as it relates to the equal measurement of money, the measurement of money, and making sure that you do no injustice when it comes to that, here's what the Bible says in Deuteronomy about being blessed in handling finances and making sure money has integrity, that it's not eroding away. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 15. It reads like this. You must have accurate and honest weights and measures so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Boom. There it is. If you do right, you're going to live long. And not only will you live long, think about this. When you don't have those financial pressures on you, how is your quality of life going to be? Let's go to number two here, what Dr. Patton says about the Bible being against inflation. Number two, increasing your money in diluting its purity. So here's another thing that a lot of people are doing. Remember I was talking about them shaving coins, collecting coins? What do you think these uh, businesses around cash for gold, what do you think these guys want your gold for? Because they know it's valuable. They know it's worth something. Because they want to take the gold from people that are unknowingly just wearing it around their necks, they have it in their pockets without realizing the actual value behind it because what they're finding is when you melt those things down and make it pure and you burn out and cook out the impurities under heat and make pure gold and silver out of it, that's where the real value comes in because you're able to purchase those gold rings or 
gold chains and silver rings and silver chains and whatever the case may be in jewelry or coins to that matter at, at a discount cheaper on the dollar and then when you actually go and trade it in to be minted to be burned down and burn out the impurities that's when the actual pure value of it comes out let's take a look at what it says here in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 22 it reads like this your silver has become dross your choice wine is diluted with water come on man I know many of you haven't been in the church all your life like myself <laughs> do you remember those days you remember those days do you remember those days you go to a club you go to a lounge and you ask for your drink I don't know what it is you know whatever drink it is that you ordered and you take a sip of it yo dog when are you gonna put some real juice to this thing you know what I mean I'm not gonna say it right now but remember like you felt that the drinks were so weak and watered down yeah well there's truth to that there's truth to that more specifically as it relates to money do you want your copper coins diluted and here's the thing too as well it also was exposed that money was not in its purest form. Here's a scripture here from James. It reads like this. Your silver is corroded, and the corrosion will be a witness. Now you ask yourself, wait a minute. How can corrosion be a witness? Well, if you own any gold or silver, you realize that what? Gold and silver does not corrode. In other words, there's other metals in there that's catching the corrosion and actually showing it and rusting, exposing the impurity, exposing the lie. So it's going on from a biblical perspective that even the corrosion, the dilution of money, is even in the Bible exposing the lies behind inflation. The other part of that is also it disrupts things like the supply chain. So it says here in Luke chapter 14, verse 28, when building a project and building a tower, certain things you have to account for. Let's take a look at what scripture says about having a project that you are building. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? By the way, let's continue reading on. I, I like reading this uh, a full chapter. For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send the delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. So in other words, the cost of you doing a project or waging war, which is this not an overnight thing, it's over a season of your life. Well, what happens if there's a sliding scale as it relates to the cost of goods and services? You can simply just miscalculate because the cost of lumber the cost of screws, the cost of steel, the cost of goods in order in labor to make a home or a tower, a wage war against debt, that number keeps sliding. So therefore, you can't properly fight that war. So in other words, if you're looking at inflation as an okay thing, though the Bible says it's completely against it. And to further look into Dr. Patton's work, he describes three biblical foundations of economic science. The reason why I go to the Bible as it relates to the biggest areas of my life relationships and finances is because these laws these values and principles stand the test of time that's to the test of humanity it's more than you and I just being a good person or seeing what's on TikTok because how many times do people just get their financial advice from quote-unquote influencers on TikTok or IG or social media even channels like mine but how do you know it's based on how do you know it actually works and next you know people get caught up and they never really get much anything done, even though they've had so much effort and practice and activities and all these different things, they get nowhere financially. They're active, they're busy, boom, 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 but nothing really happens. There's no progress because it's not based on principles and standards and values that have stood good economy, bad economy, and what still stands strong, in my opinion, and many of you, I feel the same way too as well from a biblical perspective, is God's word when it comes to that. And so does Dr. Judd Patton. He says, the three biblical foundation of economic science, number one, has got to be God's word. That is the foundation. If that is not the foundation, boom, that found, any foundation outside of God's foundation has the opportunity and ability to easily crack, especially under pressure. Second part of it and third part of it is moral laws and spiritual laws. What are your moral laws? What drives those decisions as it relates to finances, as it relates to your opinion and your perspective and your opinion as it relates to inflation and debt? 
spiritual laws? Does it violate certain things that God has already ordained to be true, and yet we're trying to do it our way, human's way, man's way, makes, you know, it's in violation of what God has normally intended for us to be. Now, if you're looking at this thing and say, you know what? At least I'm glad to be in the United States of America. Put it in the comment section below this affirmation. I am grateful yet improving. I am grateful yet improving. All right, so here's a brief moment for you to take a listen into my conversation with Dr. Judd Patton on his perspective of money, of inflation, and the Bible. Let's take a listen. You know, what can the yeah. typical person today, how, how does somebody from a faith-based perspective through that lens identify yeah. what's going on today and how can they get in front of it and how can they stay, you know, not only prayerful, but, you know, faith without works is dead. What can the typical person do it to as well? Yeah, that's that's always the issue. I, I've struggled with that myself here, what we can do. So one of the things uh, I think is, is is to get out of debt, to be act in a sound manner ourselves financially. So many people are levered up, unbelievably so. So uh, we you get into, uh, like, with the COVID, and then maybe they're in trouble. Right. Well, you know, you've got to do better than that. And while savings have picked up here because of COVID, still, I think that's one of the big things is uh, getting out of debt. Now, it's true you, you, the uh, inflation is going to wipe out debt, so you can look at it that way, too. But I would personally, you know, get out of uh, debt, uh, be on a, on a cash basis here, you know, pay your credit card bill every month, religiously. I do. So, uh, so then... I try to, uh, I'm in, and then it's where you invest. And I'm, I've been investing in uh, what I think is going to go up, in particular gold and silver. And I'm not into the uh, some of the other currencies in the world that might do a lot better than the dollar. I think the dollar is going to take a huge hit here pretty soon. It's holding up at the moment, but it's going to take a huge hit. And then prices are really going to go up. And, and uh, so to answer your question, Pray, get out of debt, uh, act in a sound way ourselves financially, live, don't live beyond your means. I mean, if you have big means, great, but if you don't, uh, but anyway, you should be, any Christian should be living in, on, a, on, a, on a sound basis uh, of not overspending and, uh, and going into debt for things they don't really need. Sure. That, that... Put off... Put, until you, you earn higher incomes later on. Correct. Whenever. Dr. Pat, you know, I, I won't take up too much of your time, but the last question I have for you, um, based on uh, a, a, a gentleman like you that's been in, been in eco uh, economics for a very long time, yeah. uh, what's your yeah. thoughts on the whole cryptocurrency from a bigger perspective when it comes to copper and silver and gold yeah. and the dollar, fiat currency, and now we got cryptocurrency, is this yeah, yeah is this uh something that's uh uh uh, uh no, biblically it's based gonna take a huge, no no it's gonna take a, there's nothing there there's nothing what is it what is it it's, they say coins it has no basis what's gold has, you do we do things with gold you know there's a there's this uh, we can satisfy human wants and needs it's all speculative uh bitcoin and all the other ten thousand uh, bit, uh other similar bitcoins they, uh, they're, they're, I can't grasp it. What is it? You know, and people, it's a speculative thing and, and there's a lot of hype on it and it continues on, but I don't see any basis in the Bible for anything like that. Uh, it has to be, uh, money has to be rooted in production. I mean, in, in real production. And so, so no, I don't, I, I am a firm believer. It's going to, the people are going to, well, those that got in early and now they, you know, it's, the prices increase so greatly, they're going to do fine. But the others that are being, uh, I think, fraudulently brought in, they're going to take a huge hit. Wow. Have you ever seen anything uh, like this in your career? No, no, have not, no. Wow. Um, I was going to recommend uh, Peter Schiff. Yeah. Peter yeah. Schiff. I'm a big fan of Peter. And Peter, Peter is out there... Uh, bashing uh bitcoin. bitcoin and whatnot so i he has a podcast and i listen to it he doesn't do it every day but i listen to it regularly and so uh he always leaves a little room to talk <laughs> to talk about bitcoin <laughs> so, and how they how they hype it and all that they do, do today and 
and he's he is very much opposed and i'm i'm in full agreement with him i just don't see a biblical basis for it well, well you, yeah. you, it's when when things are biblically based that's you know that's why i've always said i said you know i just don't want to be a good person in the financial services industry because being a good person is not enough of a moral and spiritual standard yeah there's a there's another economist i follow his name is um he wrote a book called uh, God Wants You to Be Ri God Wants You to Be Rich. Paul Zane Pilzer. Have you ran across him in your career? Paul, I don't believe so. Paul Zane Pilzer. No. Yeah. yeah. He, God okay. wants you to be rich. That's the name of his book. Okay. Yeah. Well, sure. Let's just be productive and profitable. But long as we keep things in in order, so that we keep God first, as as you would would, would agree. Amen. Amen to that. Yep. Yeah. 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 So and if we can handle, we can handle uh, the riches. Then great. <laughs> Many people, I don't think, can. Yeah. But if you're if you're really uh, oriented to obey in God, uh, you should be able to handle riches yeah. and prosperity, and uh, which is a basis to help others. That's the big thing here. We have our wealth and our riches to help others. That's right. Not just ourselves. Yes. Yes. Uh, that would be some point. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Matt. I appreciate talking to you. If you need to f have a follow up or something. Uh, to clarify or anything, uh, just just uh, give me a call. Dr. Patton, thank you so much. Thanks for being so generous. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Matt. Okay, bye-bye. Right, bye-bye. Amazing conversation, huh? Thank you, Dr. Judd Patton, for your time. What was your biggest takeaway from that conversation? Please put it in the comment section below. I'm very interested in what you guys are thinking and what that uh, conversation meant for you. But uh, let's take a look at what the national deficit looks like, what the national debt of the United States of America looks like. And uh, if you look back in 2019, the taxes collected by the United States of America was $3.5 trillion. They spent $4.4 trillion. Interest payments to debt owed is $375 billion. The deficit, because obviously they're spending more than what they're actually collecting, added to the national deficit was $1.1 trillion in 2019. 2020, the United States government collected $3.4 trillion million in tax revenue, spent $6.58 trillion, obviously it was the pandemic, uh, paid out in interest payments, over $344 billion interest payments, debts owing to other people, and $3.13 trillion was added to the national deficit. 2021, $4.5 trillion was collected in tax revenue, $6.82 million was spent, $352 billion was spent on interest owing other people, and $2.71 was added to the national deficit. According to the federal debt clock, uh, at the recording of this video, right now we're $28.9 trillion in debt in the United States of America. What's going to be funny is when we rewatch this video a year from now, or five years from now, or ten years from now, I wonder what that national deficit is going to look like if we don't rise up and stand up for saying, hey, there's something wrong with inflation. United States government, we have to do something with inflation because it's hurting the people in this country that hits it the, the most, is, which is the multicultural middle class. It's hitting us the most because when you're looking at small businesses, we're looking at the average Joe in America. This is an injustice. This is being false witness on our brothers and our sisters. You say, hey, listen, man, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, no longer is 10, 15, 20 bucks a year from now. It's actually less money. That's bearing false witness. If you're a house, would you survive that long? If you're a house, how quickly would you file bankruptcy? If you're a house, and this is the way you ran your financial household, how quickly would you be in foreclosure? So the reality is, Somehow, some way, the United States of America seems to support itself by printing more money, and guess who it is affecting? You think that it's helping you. You think that student loan debt payoff and forgiveness is helping you. You think that these, uh, these uh, stimulus payments and unemployment checks are helping you. Free stuff from the government, free stuff from the government, free stuff from the government, right? Infusion of tax, infrastructure, all these things you think it's helping you. But when you're looking at the numbers or you're looking at the raw data, guess who this is accumulating for? For our children, for them to pay. For us currently, how do we pay right now in this generation? By raising the income taxes. And so in addition to taxation and inflation, guess what? Your dollar today is worth less than it was last year. And next year, your money's gonna be worth less next year than it is today. So what are you supposed to do? What do you do about this? So I'm going to assume that you're praying. You're watching the Seven Figures Squad Scripture Series, you're praying. You're praying not only for yourself, but hey, you're also praying for our leaders. The Bible instructs us to pay for our kings, to pay for our leaders, even if you don't agree with them or not. Listen, I, I know how people feel about Trump. I know how people feel about Biden. But at the end of the day, you and I are instructed to pray 
for our leaders. You need to pray to get God, give them wisdom in their dealings. I know they're not going to be perfect. And I know some of you guys are thinking, what, how do I know I'm going to get any benefit from it? Listen, you pray like it's up to God, but you work like it's up to you. You pray, and you have to understand, right now, enough is enough. You also have to understand, too, you got to forgive those who have offended you and hurt you. The most powerful virtue out there is for your ability to continue to extend forgiveness and love. At the end of the day, no matter how much this American flag has hurt either ourselves or you think it's hurting your family and friends, at the end of the day, this is home. I know there's no perfect family. I know there's no perfect uh, uh, company. There's no perfect union. Listen, my wife and I have been married for six going on seven years. As much as people think that there's a perfect power couple, I'd love to be you guys, power couple goals, all that type of stuff. You have to understand there's a healthy amount of arguments that happen between my wife and I. There's a healthy amount of conflict that happens between my, my children and I. I've got kids between 26 years old and two and a half years old. There's a healthy amount of chaos that goes on in our house. But however, we've committed to prayer. We've committed to love. We've committed to forgiveness. At the end of the day, we're there unconditionally for each other. Some areas of practicality, scripture-wise, Matthew 6, verse 33, it reads like this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. And all of these things shall be added unto you in other versions. So seek ye first the kingdom of God. If you're a faith-based person, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Don't seek ye first a financial plan. Don't seek ye first an investment opportunity. Don't seek ye first, listen, seek ye first how God wants you to act according to his will, according to his righteousness, and God is going through, I don't have that answer for you. I ain't God. I'm just a guy here on YouTube just sharing with you and how to instruct you where to go. That's between you and God. That's between you and your relationship with him. At the same time, you need to love God for who he is, not what he can do for you. So when you're looking at the scripture here, number one, some areas of practicality. Number one, are you clear about what you want? And more importantly, are you focused? Let's take a look at some specific scripture here. When you're lacking wisdom, what should you do? When you're lacking wisdom, what should you do? James 1 verse 5, it reads like this. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So my question to you, my friends, are you asking? Or are you just kind of hold up saying, oh, when's God going to bless me? When's God going to come by and send a... Lottery ticket my way. When's God going to send somebody to put money in my pocket? Hey, by the way, that's just probably never, ever going to happen. So don't get your hopes up. But if you're looking for wisdom, what is wisdom? Wisdom is knowledge times experience. You put that all together, that's wisdom. Not only knowing what to do, but also having all the different nuances of when those situations come up with the decisions were made in the meantime. That's called experience. You put those two together, bam, you got a powerful combination. So if you're lacking wisdom, seek wisdom, but at the same time, seek wisdom. You know what I mean? Seek wisdom from God and also seek wisdom here on earth for those that actually know the answer to help you get through inflation and help you get through debt. Jeremiah 29, 10, 11. I'm always encouraged by the scripture. It reads like this. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a good future. Have you ever heard somebody ever say that we are spiritual beings having a human experience? Because we're just being prepared for a life in heaven. And so, listen, you can't ask me, well, Matt, why is it that way? There's many scriptures and that's why you go to church. That's why I have people that lead you in your spiritual life. And one of the areas I feel led to evolve in is the area of personal finance. So while we're here on earth, we can serve people more while we're here on earth by being good, wise stewards that relates to our finances. And uh, when you do have God's attention and you are seeking wisdom and you are knocking on the door, so therefore you're inviting in the right conversations, what does God say then about once you have opportunities. Certain doors have not been opened in your favor. It reads like this in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. Again, Proverbs, it reads like this. Let your eyes look straight. Fix your gaze directly before you. You see, once your eyes are locked in, there's so many different things that's going to come your way, that's going to distract you. Ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, ex-spouses, family and friends, broke family and friends debt collectors, 
Things you didn't square away in the past, now they're coming up again, right? What you got to do is what? Focus. Because all these things are trying to capture your attention, and they see them, boom, you do a big U-turn. Or boom, you go drift to the left and to the right, and you're off the path that God has intended for you. So focus. And the intention of this channel, Seven Figure Squad, because I understand that it takes money to buy the things that you need to buy for your family, to provide for the people that you love and care about. And because of inflation, and because the rising need in America for people to think that they need debt to live on, to live the part, the challenge I have with many people today, with even myself going through my own damn self, is having a hardcore reality check. And uh, there's an area that the devil knows where he can distract you to keep you from honoring God. And because when you honor God, God can bless you. And what happens when God bless you, the world is blessed too as well. But the fact that the devil knows the fact that he can hit you in your finances, which it causes people to stumble very quickly, he wants to make sure you are focused on him. The devil wants you to focus on him. And guess what the devil tempts you with? Tempts you with even money. He even tempts you with power and the lack of understanding how to handle money, power, title, esteem, influence. So that's why many of your decisions as it relates to money, success, prosperity, wealth, and happiness, I hope, my friends, are biblically based. Because money and power will, if it's not used in the right areas, will corrupt you. Listen to what Dr. Patton here had said about money and its design and purpose, what it's intended for. Take a quick listen again. You should be able to handle riches yep. and prosperity, and, uh, which is a basis to help others. That's the big thing here. We have our wealth and our riches to help others. That's right. Not just ourselves. Okay, did you hear that? Lock that in, boom. Number two, increase skills and abilities. Read the parable of the talents, Matthew 25. So if you say, hey, Lord, I want to rise up above my current income, to rise up above inflation, the current debt situation I'm in right now, great. You need to increase your skills and abilities. And no, college is not the only way for you to increase your skills and abilities. Matter of fact, the more and more people realize that college is a business, and for a lot of people, college has been scamming them, the more you realize there's many other ways to increase your skills and abilities to be more marketable in the marketplace, and one of those skills and abilities I would encourage you to hone in on is your ability to sell. And some of you guys thinking, hey, you know, Matt, you know, sales, you know, just, you know I got a degree, it's kind of sales is kind of below me. No, no, no. Everything in life is about sales. Oh, Matt, you know, I'm not good at sales. No, 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 you are. How do you know I'm good at sales? You just sold yourself that you're not good at sales and you bought. <laughs> okay? You just sold yourself you're not good and you bought. You just built a sales episode where you're not good at something, and guess what? Because you chose not to raise your standard, you bought a lower standard. You bought something. You see? Now, the opposite is true. What happens if you sell yourself a higher standard, which is God's standard? What standard do you want to set? Low standard, your standard, or God's standard? I hope it's God's standard, because God wants nothing more than your very best. He doesn't want your very least, he wants your very best. We look at it here, another one here, is learn to sell and reinvent, reinvest your profits. Let's read what it says here in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 16. It reads like this. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. You see this? She's putting a deal together. By the way, this is the area that a lot of people love about Proverbs 31, this is, which is a wife of noble character. And quite frankly, a lot of people think that's also a husband also of honor and value. But think about this. She considers a field and buys it. She didn't deliberate on it. She didn't ask for the approval of friends and family. She said, I'm a woman. I know what to do. I'm going to consider a field and buy it. And when I buy it, I'm going to plant in it. I'm going to plant and eventually harvest. I'm going to reinvest those finances and revenues back into considering more fields to expand the profit center, the business opportunity that has been presented before her. And consider this evidence also from Acts, where Peter and John are going before the Sanhedrin, which is a council of religious leaders, of Jewish leaders at the time, because they just witnessed what happened to God. They just witnessed what happened to Jesus being resurrected and how he healed certain people. And the Sanhedrin, which is basically the religious council, they're saying, hey, no, no, you can't prophesy anymore and talk about this guy. Jesus. You can't do that no more, man. You can't do that. Well, guess what happened here? 
they went back to their people. After the Sanhedrin said, okay, you're released. Because they were put in prison for a second because they were prophesying in Jesus' name. But they were imprisoned and then they were released. And then Peter and John went back to the people. He said, what happened? What happened? He told them what happened in, in front of this council, the Sanhedrin. And he said, listen, man, we need to go out, man. We need to speak boldly God's word, man. We need to let everybody know what just happened here, man. We need to spread the word. We need to prophesy in Jesus' name. You kidding me? So they took off. And guess what happened? All the entrepreneurs got together and they started laying money at the feet of the apostles. Let's take a look at the scripture. It reads like this. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. From time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Now think about that real quick. Those who owned land and businesses and houses, what did they do with money beforehand? Were they foolish with their finances? No, they were good with their finances. And when the opportunity came up to be used by God, they sold their businesses, they sold the house, or took the profits from the land and said, hey man, here's some money to fund and finance your ministry. You see, that's why I believe that there needs to be kings and queens of the marketplace. I know that we have our preachers, we got our worship leaders, the Levites of today. But I believe you and I who are called to entrepreneurship, who are called to understand money and finance, who are called to understand relationships, are called to do something big, to understand that, man, this inflation and debt thing is an attack also on God's money. And we need to bear witness to those who are bearing false witness to God's word. And a couple other things. Right now, no big purchases. No going to big debt. I would hold on to your cash and wait for opportunities to come up. And if you're going to use credit cards, make sure you pay off your credit cards immediately. Now, I know credit card debt is bad, correct. But using credit cards are not. If you want to use credit cards as a financial tool to help you double down on the opportunities your $1 has to make you two or three, four, five more dollars. Okay? So that's the things that you have to consider with that. Number, last but not least. And last but not least, if you want to make sure that 2021 is the beginnings of the best years of your financial life, 2022 is going to be the mark that you look back and say, hey, 2025... I think we're here because, I thank God we're here because we did all the work back in 2021, 2022. So you got to attend conferences and events. Here's what it says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, in terms of meeting together. Do not give up meeting together as some of you are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So I know that many of us are still kind of using Zoom. I get it. But there's something to be said about watching things on Zoom but connecting with one another in person. There's something when human beings are together in person. Listen, however you deem the vaccine, vaccine or no vaccine, mask or no mask, social distancing or no social distancing, I encourage you just to be amongst the presence of people. Do whatever you need to be safe. Take care of yourself. Take whatever dietary or health supplements you need to take to make sure you're protected against the pandemic that's out there. But don't forgo the fact that there's still a huge major benefit of God's people being amongst one another in connection and community with one another. So before I let you go, check out a couple of videos here. Uh, number one, how this one Bible story made me millions. I did kind of mention it to here in one of the points. Please uh, go ahead if you want to unpack that story. It's one of our uh, top videos of our YouTube channel. The second one here is how attending conferences made me a millionaire. Just my last point here, how. There's 10 steps there that I gave how connecting with one another in person to not only meet with one another, but to encourage one another, lift each other up, how that has helped myself and many other people increase their finances uh, incrementally and exponentially and rise above this whole inflation and debt scenario that sadly many people in America are facing today. That being said, guys, I love to know your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me. Again, put it in the comment section below. I appreciate you tuning in. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.